Alright guys, so my boss just came to me and he asked me for a way to print out all the information about every employee in our company. So we have 500 employees and they each have a user ID, a first name, a last name, and we also store their age and their weight because, well, my boss is weird and he wants to make sure, um, you know, no one's eating too many cheeseburgers, so we also keep track of their weight. So this is what I did. I put int user ID and then I put char to make a character array first name and no one has a first name longer than 25 I also did this for their last name and I also needed to store and print out their age so that's an integer and their weight which is a float alright so this can store all of the information for user 1 and now let me just do this for user 2 okay okay oops oops messing up there user 2 2 you know what if I do this for 500 freaking people it's gonna be a pain in the butt so I'm scratching my head and I'm thinking wouldn't it be cool if we could just make this template one time a template that can store the user ID first name last name age and weight and we can use it over and over and over again I know what I can do I can use an array so you, can, you can store a bunch of crap in there. Okay, well, wait a minute. An array can only store a single type of variable. For example, it can only store ints or floats. You can't store an int and a char and a float in the same array. Oh, crap. So we can't use that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the wonderful world, kind of a tongue twister, of structures. A structure is a way that you can group a bunch of variable types together and they don't need to be the same type. For example, you can pretty much create a blueprint for a person and store an int, a care, and a float all together. Pretty freaking sweet. So let me show you guys how to do that. And you guys are going to love me after this. Now, I want to mention one thing. Whenever you make a structure, you can just go ahead and make it up here or wherever you want. But 99% of the time, Programmers like to make their structures in a different file. It just helps organize everything and it's just, I don't know, common amongst programmers. So they put them in a separate header file and maybe remember that we made this header file like, I don't know, 20 tutorials ago or something. So open that back up. First of all, cut this because we don't add any of our structure definition in the main file. So now let me show you guys the basic syntax of how to create a structure. Whenever you create a structure, the first thing you write is struct. Pretty much tell C, hey, I'm going to be making a structure. The next thing you do is you need to name your structure. And this is just so if you have like a uh, structure to store employee information, and if you have another structure to store, I don't know, student information, maybe teacher information. Well, if you have multiple structures, you're going to need to be able to identify them. So we need to name it. So after this, what you do is add two little curly braces and a semicolon. The semicolon just says we're done with the structure. Now in between those curly braces is where we write all of those individual variables. These are called members of the structure. So a structure is pretty much just a group of variables and those individual variables are called members. Simple enough. So now, basically, as I'm going to be showing you guys later on, what we can do is we can create a bunch of users, and they can each have an integer, a character for their name, all of this crap, and we just group together a bunch of variables of different types. Pretty freaking sweet. And if you're ever wondering, well, what's this useful for? It's really useful whenever you're working with, um, you know, like users or employees, and you want to like display all of their information at once as a table or anything like that so I'll show you guys how to actually use this structure right now now that we made it might as well use it right so of course since this is in the header file the first thing we need to do is import this so or include it I should rather say I'm used to program Python but anyways include and remember we can just use those double quotes Bucky's info dot H and what this does is essentially copy this and paste it right in here it does the same thing even though you know it's going on behind the scenes so now we have that structure included so let's use it right now 
So whenever we use a structure, the first thing we need to do is remember, we can store as many people as we want using the same template. So how do we store each individual person? Well, just say that we're going to be using a structure. What one are you going to be using? Where well, are you going to be using the user structure that we just created? And after this, you write like the name of the person. So we'll say for this one, for this template, we're going to do it for Bucky. And you can do this for as many people as you want. Now we're going to say, okay, let's do it again. And um, let's use another one for Emily. Okay, simple enough. So if you're saying, okay, so Bucky now has a user ID, first name, last name, age, and weight. Emily now has a user ID, first name, last name, age, and weight a lot faster than typing out, you know, um, user ID one, two, three, four, save this a whole bunch of freaking code. But how do we actually set Bucky's weight to something or set Bucky's user ID to something? Well, in order to do that, you do this. Type the name of whatever you named it up here. So Bucky, and then after it, hit the dot. And this is a new operator that I want to tell you guys about. This is called the dot operator. And it's used for accessing individual elements or items inside your structure. And again, they're called items or that's what I call them, but technically they're called members. So user ID is a member, first name is a member. So this is how we access each member or variable inside the structure. So we'll say to set Bucky's user ID, just put Bucky's dot operator user ID and just treat it like a normal variable. So what's my user ID? I don't know, we'll set this equal to one. So whenever we're setting the user ID of Emily, Emily, user ID, of course she doesn't want one, she wants two, so on and so forth. Now, after this, again, we don't just need to um, set it explicitly using the equal signs. We can do cool stuff like puts, I'll we'll just give them a little prompt. We'll allow the user to run this program and like enter their first name or something. I don't know. So enter the um, first name of user one. And I want to keep this, okay, actually that's good. I'll keep this program simple. And of course, whenever we do gets, just like before we put Bucky, first name, and typically this would just be like user one and user two, but just uh, so I can like really easily display what's going on, I just put Bucky, first name, you know, a little bit easier. Now, of course, we can do this for another the first name of user two. Of course, that would be Emily's first name. So whatever name they enter right here gets stored in the first name of Emily and Bucky, tomato, tomato, simple stuff. So I guess um, now that we know how to access the members of a structure, how to make a structure, might as well just go ahead and print it out, get this tutorial over so we can move on to something a little cooler actually. So we'll put like, okay, user one, can't type, uh, I'll print out Bucky's ID. User one ID um, is percent D and I don't know, kick that to a new line, who freaking cares. So ID is Bucky's user ID and copy this. All right, so users two, let's see. First name is, that would be a percent S because it's a string and that would be Emily's first name, which is hopefully Emily. All right, and that's pretty much it. So now when I run this bad boy, Come on, there we go. All right, so enter the first name of user one. Well, that is Bucky. Enter the first name of user two. That's Emily. Check it out. User one, which is me, my ID is one. User two, Emily. Her first name is Emily. Simple stuff. So again, this isn't really useful in this sample because right now our program is really small. It only has two users. However, when you have um, bigger programs and when you're actually working for a company what's gonna happen is instead of having to type these variables 500 times for each user you can just make one single structure 
and it can be a blueprint for every single user. So then you can do just cool things and loop through and like uh, print out all of their items in a database or in a, a CSV file or whatever you want to do. But now you know how to use structures and since we know how to use structures, we learn about memory. In the next tutorial, I want to start talking to you guys about files, how to create a text file programmatically and some really cool things that you can do with them. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you later.